Hello chess friends, here is Vadim Milov and today I'd like to talk to you about exchange sacrifice about exchanging the rook for a knight or the bishop so let's look at the first example this is the position from the game Ryshevsky against Petrosian played in the year 1953 this is a well-known game um, it's black to, black to play and uh, first of all as usual before taking a decision we have to try to assess the position so um, obviously white uh, has uh, not uh, such a great bishop on b2 but on the other hand his pawns d4 and d5 can move forward and in particular the move e5 e6 currently can be a very unpleasant threat on the other hand black pieces seem to be doing okay but the knight on c6 is uh, very far away from blockading the pawns e5 and d4 for example knight would belong to the square d5 but the question is how can the knight come to d5 or for example knight could be transferred to e6 but it's difficult because for the moment the rook is standing on d8 and um, so the threats e5 e6 uh, or d4 d5 can become very unpleasant for black and uh, this is the reason why Petrosian who was a great master of exchange sacrifices and in similar positions played a very good move rook e7 e6 so let's look at the idea what is behind this move uh, does it make sense for black to give up the exchange well the idea is uh, quite simple black stops white from playing e5 e6 and at the same time and although black is not very happy to give up the exchange but he, he Petrosian assumed that uh, it's worth sacrifice giving up the exchange in return for possibility of playing this maneuver knight e7 d5 and it appears to be that white can't stop it so in the game white did not take immediately on a6 he played a3 a4 um, bishop e6 wouldn't change much black could have taken on a6 with the pawn then play knight e7 knight e5 or with the queen which is which is not bad either the idea is the same and uh, the point is that uh, the bishop on b2 is uh, not doing very well and the white mm, is running out of active ideas after putting the knight on d5 black, could, uh, black can play rook c8 and then prepare, prepare before and uh, black pieces are very active here so if we go back in the game white played a4 um, assuming that after b4 d5 this pawn on, d4, on c4 is going to get lost assuming this line pawn takes queen takes c4 and the bishop will be alive soon after c takes b4 so this position would be acceptable for white so this is re the reason why Petrosian rejected playing this natural move b5 before and 
simply played knight to e7 white took takes and uh, even though that uh, white managed to free his bishop for example white has an idea after a4 white has an idea of playing bishop a3 black position is very much, much acceptable for instance knight d5 is the idea here so in the game white played queen f1 95 rook f3 uh, here b4 is not possible because the pawn on c4 is hanging so black played knight to bishop to d3 d3 with the idea queen if queen f2 then b4 and uh, black pawns are very strong and queen a4 is a threat for this reason Ryshevsky decided to give up the exchange in return and here black has to be a bit careful because white is still a pawn up and for example in case of b takes a4 then after c4 white center three pawns against one can become very unpleasant for this reason petrosian didn't take on a4 he played in b5 b4 now the pawn on a4 is hanging and i assume after c4 black goes back to b6 and uh, white can't protect the pawn on a4 and at the same time black is holding the blockade against these three pawns also after queen a8 c6 this pawn on c4 can become vulnerable it will be attacked several times so the position is actually good for black so in the game Ryshevsky took on b on b4 instead of c4 what we looked at just now but after b a takes before he played a5 now rook a8 controlling the pawn and white is still a pawn up in this position but the knight is very good and if on d5 and uh, the pawns on these pawns d4 and d5 are actually worthless and uh, the posi position is about equal but uh, if anyone can be better here then it's black not white because uh, knight on d5 is much better than the bishop on b2 so rook a1 him white is trying to bring the bishop to d2 restricting the knight on d5 so, queen c7 should d2 now black just uh, wants to exchange in, to exchange the pawns a, a6 and b4 so he played b3 here h6 king h8 and uh, the draw was agreed because uh, after queen a6 queen a6 rook a6 rook takes b2 um, pawns are getting exchanged and uh, the position is equal so as we have seen in this game by sacrificing the exchange black did not win this game but uh, he was able to stabilize his position and uh, restrict uh, 
white play. In the moment when white was threatening to play e5 and d6. So, in my opinion, it was a very good positional sacrifice. Now, let's look at the other example. This is the position from the game De Firmian against Ivanchuk, played in the year 1989. It's easy to see the, the opening was the Sicilian defense. In this position, White played quite an obvious move, Queen to G3, threatening Bishop H6. And this move has another idea, for example, after King h8, then knight g4, and by playing knight g4, white is fighting for the square d5, because knight on g4 is going to eliminate one of the controllers of the d5 square. So, in this position, Ivanchuk played a great move. He took on c3 with the idea, obvious idea, to take on e4 with the knight. So black is going to give up the exchange plus gain one pawn. So here, yeah. taking on c3 with the pawn wouldn't wouldn't change much, because after knight e4. Black has a great position. Took knight e4. Here f5. We see that uh, during the last few moves the position has changed completely. Though white uh, won the exchange, black, black has a very strong center. Pawn, pawn center. Two bishops. And uh, potentially his pieces are very active, all his minor pieces, like two bishops, uh, two bishops and the knight. At the same time, white has no counterplay. White has no pawns in the center, and it's not very clear where white is going to organize the play. So he played knight f1. Here, bishop h4. Weakening the position even further. Now pawn on f2 is hanging. In case of rook e2, bishop c4 would be played. And if g3, then knight g5. With a very un unpleasant threats. For instance, after g takes h4, check knight e1 and black is going to win the queen so like in the previous example white after bishop h4 white chose to give up the exchange in return give it back so bishop f2 split King h2, of course not king f2, because f takes e4, winning the, the queen. King h2, pawn takes queen d6. This is the position white was aiming for, because now finally bishop on c3 can get some play, because this pawn on e5 is likely to fall, and um, after queen e5, mm, white pieces can become active, but on the other hand uh, e e4 pawn is very strong and uh, why, uh, black is going to have the initiative in the center thanks to the e4 pawn so in order to keep the initiative black played bishop b3 playing with tempo and e3 and after queen, he played queen f7 with the idea after knight take e3 knight takes e3 to play rook e8 
and win this knight. So instead of knight e3, white played knight g3, but it doesn't change the evaluation of the position. To rook a8, queen d6, bishop c4. This pawn is actually unstoppable. And after rook e6, white. Uh, White position is hopeless and he resigned after a few moves. Now let's have a look at other example. Uh, we are going to look at the game Lotie against Anand, played in the year 1997. So let's uh, see this game from the beginning. C4. Theory goes without a lot of comments. So e5 was played in the game white has to play actively otherwise the knight on e4 uh, on a4 is going to be in trouble. So takes on e5, knight e5, bishop f4. And in this position Anand played knight g6 and gave up the exchange. And um, well, actually, black doesn't have much of a choice in this position because, as um, shown by Anand, for example, knight fg4 is uh, not a good idea in the view of this line. Bishop g3, knight e3, and after knight f1, bishop e5, and white should be winning because the knight on f1 is trapped. And uh, bishop d6 is not a good idea either because the bishop on d6 is going to be in trouble very soon. Now black has a lot of problems here. So it's much better and also safer to give up the exchange. So bishop e8, queen takes b8. Knight to queen b4, trying to free his knight, the future. Should be four here, castles. King h1, d8. Here we see that um, White uh, um, black is threatening anything immediately, but because white doesn't have good squares in the center, uh, black simply um, puts his piece, uh, pieces on a good on a good position, and uh, white is getting outplayed. Knight five was played in the game. For instance, Anand shows this line in his comments. And uh, this potential pin can be very unpleasant. Bishop e8 and e5 is a very strong threat here. Or, for example, the following line. If knight c3, then bishop e8 immediately. White is in trouble again. So knight c5 takes and bishop b5 attacking the rook and uh, the knight is pinned. It's very important to note that the potentially unpleasant bishop on b3 
is completely useless here because of these pawns and it's it's often worth it to give up the exchange in order to keep this bishop on b3 passive so in the game again why chose uh, to return the exchange and play the rook f6 well after uh, for example after rook f3 queen b6 uh, white pieces are completely unprotected so rook f6 pawn takes queen g1 bishop 8 knight e6 takes and after a5 um, well black is a pawn up and uh, has a much better position his king is much safer because there are more pawns around the king than around the white king and um, white mm, black won this position in a few moves so again we see that uh, the decision so again we see that the decision to play knight g6 so again we see that the decision to play knight g6 here was a very good decision for black